Hey guys, Kurt Haas here from Hostile Conditioning. We just finished doing our Saturday heavy volume max effort bench. And now we're coming upstairs and in the last couple of weeks I've been focusing on shoulder mobility using the bands. So today I'm going to run myself and Norma and Claude through uh, some band mobility. We're going to start off with band L flies. We're going to do band pull aparts. We're going to do shoulder dislocates. And then we're going to do behind the neck band shoulder press. And what this is to do is to increase our mobility and range of motion in the shoulder area. A lot of people do a lot of pressing. Well, you'll notice that they get a lot of, front, a lot of frontward uh, tension here coming forward and stuff. What we're doing now is working the mobility, increasing range of motion back here so we have a better balance and it's going to allow for better shoulder mobility when you're benching. You're going to actually be able to move the bar back up and down much more efficiently and get the upper back really planted and working for you biomechanically. A lot of people, even if they don't do a lot of pressing, have a lot of poor shoulder mobility. So this is excellent for anybody who's got stiff shoulders, a lot of neck pain, tension headaches, sit at a computer a lot. This is something you can set up in your office and do once a day, twice a day. We work on high reps. It's not about how far you can move, it's about holding the right form and working the range of motion and increasing that and really targeting those really small muscle groups of the shoulders that work with the rear delt, the, the mid delt, behind the traps and the uh, subscapular region where there's a lot of small things happening that have to be worked and, and need to be loosened up to have better more range of motion. So the first one we're going to start with is a standing L fly. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a band roughly around chest shoulder height. We're going to hold it in a fist grip with our fist up against the wall and we're going to dig our elbow in. What's very important when we do this move is that this elbow stays into the body, does not come out. Okay? So we want to really work the rear, the small part. Put your hand on your hip, sit nice and solid, look straight ahead, and you pull it out as far as you can by keeping that elbow in. That elbow has to come up. You have to feel the tension of the elbow inside the whole time. Keep that elbow in. Russell, come over here and hold his elbow in. So for some people having trouble keeping their elbow in, we're going to have a partner assist where they push the elbow in so it can't come out. And what's going to happen, you're going to notice, see so Cole can't move it as much because he's isolated. Bring it all the way in, come in further. No, nope. use your body out, but bring your hand further across your body this way. Release more in here. Okay, come back out and in. Come out more this way. Now go up. Increase the range. Dig it in. That's it. If you look over at Norma, she's using an orange band. She's working on keeping that elbow in. Keep that elbow touching your body. Don't let it come out. Push back out. We're working 10 to 15 reps. When you isolate, you'll feel a burn. Come back over here, okay? And once you're done, you're going to switch sides. Same thing, you'll notice you'll have one side stronger than the other, more dominant. That's normal. Work the range on that. All the way in. When you use a band, if you're too close to the band and it's loose, you need to step away and create some starting tension. Very important. Again, I don't care how far that fist goes away from your body, I want that elbow to stay in. And you'll feel it hit those small muscle groups in the shoulder. It'll start to burn. In fact, I usually sweat more doing this than I do doing all the benching downstairs. Again, 10 to 15 per side. And then you're going to switch. Depending on the day, two to three sets. Today we're going to work two sets. Been doing this on a lot more regular basis. Try to do it every day. Right from the first one on, I noticed a difference the next day in my, how my shoulders fed, felt, how my traps sat, my posture, and then just doing push-ups in one of the conditioning workouts. Big difference. Feeling that cloak? Very important, keep that elbow in. It burns. Back to the other side, keep that elbow in, hand on your hip, try to maintain very good form. You see it myself, my right hand has better range of motion through the shoulder than my left side does. Often if you're right handed, you're right dominant, that's the case. Sometimes not, but most often it is. So you work as far as you can with that side. You can use this as a good, this is what we call our mid-range band, our second level up. The one Norm is using is the orange, the orange mini. I recommend when you start this, you start with that, so you focus on technique. Don't get caught up in trying to do the heaviest band. It's not an ego thing. It's range of motion, time under tension, and really going for that burn, isolation. Sacrificing that to go to a thicker band is just a waste and you're not going to get the real progress that you want. Second move we're going to go into, we're going to take the band off the post, and we're going to go into band pull parts. Now we're really hitting the rear delts and the lower part of the traps, the rhomboid area. When you go to set up to set your tension, you're going to take your band, you're going to put your hands straight out in front of you so that they're right in line with your shoulders coming out of your body. That's how much spacing in the band you're going to use. You're going to grip the band nice and tight, feet shoulder width apart, nice and firm, keeping the arms straight. You're going to pull 
your arms apart till they hit the chest. If, you're in, if you can't hold that tension without bending your arms, widen the grip on the band a little bit. Okay, keep the head straight, pull hard, back. And when you come back in, only come back in as far as the shoulders. Don't come all the way in. Keep that tension. Pull and in. Pull and in. You can do it to the forehead, you can do it to the belly button, and you can do it to the chest. For now, we're working the chest. But if you change the angle, big difference. The lower you go, the tougher it's going to be. You feel that, guys? Yes. 12 to 15. Rest about a minute, and then you go for it again. Like I said, I don't know about you guys, but I'm sweating more now, like I said earlier, because we're working on such a small muscle group that doesn't get a lot of tension, attention and tension, and we're working it. It's not easy. There's some pain, some discomfort. Not an injury pain, but an isolation, like when you really get a burn in the muscle that you're working, and all those small muscles that are all complex and dug in back here, you'll see there's a lot of stuff. There's so many little muscles working together in here that when they start getting bounded up and they can't move, there's a big difference. So you need to hit these small muscle groups to loosen them up so that you have a better rotation, you're going to plant better on the bench, and you're going to have a much better workout, much better shoulder mobility. So let's hit set number two. Come back aggressively, but come back under control. Drive back, back under control. 10 to 15. You really want to hit that burn. Again, I wouldn't increase bands until you, the band width, they're all the same length, they're all the 41 inch stretch bands that we use, hostile bands. It's the width that makes all the difference in the tension. You don't want to increase the width on the band until you can easily do 10, 15 to 25. When you can do that, look at going up to another band. But again, if you go up to another band and you lose form, it's no good. Go back down and do more reps. Next one we're going to do is called shoulder dislocates. Same thing, hands up in front of us around the shoulders, straight out from the shoulders. Face out your band. From there, we're going to open up over our head, come back to behind the shoulder blades, come back together in front. All the way back, come back in front. When I come back in front, I don't close it. Keep it at the shoulder width. Spread it apart, go back. So if you look from behind, coming back, bring it in front. Open up as you come back, bring it in front. This is going to be a different angle, it's going to hit the rear. Top and rear part of the shoulders over here. Different burn, again, we're hitting different angles. I've seen this correct a lot of shoulder problems, a lot of front shoulder problems. You know when you get guys saying that it hurts when they're benching, they can't do barbell anymore, they have to switch to dumbbells because there's too much pain. This is the stuff that's gonna rehab it and fix it. it makes a world of difference. That's it, Norma. What's it up? Yeah, a really good exercise. The same thing, if you're using a band, and it's getting easy, shorten the grip. Left, you take a shorter grip on the band, it's going to create a lot more tension when it goes back there. That's the thing, that's awesome thing about these stretch bands that we have here. Really tough, you can stretch the snot out of them. They don't snap, they're layered, so if they start to fray, you'll have lots of signs of wear before they actually go. There's a lot of bands out there that are form, molded into form, as soon as they get a little nick, they'll snap almost right away. These have layer after layer after layer on them, piled on each other, so as it starts to wear, the little layers come off, it gives you lots of warning when it's time to change a band. So, big difference in the quality of the band as well. The last one we're going to do is called the behind the neck shoulder press with the band. Same thing, hands out in front, about shoulder width apart, bring it back, try to maintain a 90 degree with your shoulders, bring it down behind your head like a barbell press, press it back up. Very difficult to do. I want you to try and make sure your elbows stay at 90 degrees when you go back. Really good mobility movement here. So if you have to widen up the grip a bit, do it, but make sure you don't do this when you go back. Keep the elbows bent and up. Bent no, no. and up. You might have to lean your head forward a bit, but try to keep it as if you were pressing a barbell. For me, it's a really tough one because of my overall shoulder thickness and chest thickness. I need that mobility. So since I started doing this, it's much better, but my goal is to be able to bring those arms back a nice 90 degrees, go all the way down to the top of the trap bottom of the neck, and press back up without hitting the back of my skull or my hat. So why? Bring it down, press it up. Bring it down, press it up. 10 to 15. As you can see, we're breathing, we're sweating. It's not easy. We're hitting those small muscle groups, there's a big burn in it. Let's do one last set. Let's do a couple more, Claude. I want to show us something here. Go back up. Open it up a little bit. When you come down, 
Try to get your shoulders back a bit. Press out and all the way up. Do not go fast. Focus. All right. Very important that we isolate. This is not an ego exercise about how much you can press, about how thick a band you can handle. It's about isolating. You see the discomfort he's in right now? He's breathing like he just got chased by a bear. That's shoulder mobility work, and that shows that we need it. Every athlete, every person has two areas that need to always work on their mobility. One is hip mobility, can never have too much, and we always need more. The other one is shoulder mobility. Everything that happens, happens through here. The moment we, have, we can move better, we can rotate better, we'll function so much better overall, we'll have better strength, better endurance, better biomechanical setup on your exercises, where it'll maintain better technique, which will allow you to perform at better levels no matter what the exercise or sport that you're doing is. So again, we work hips a lot, and we focus a lot on the shoulder mobility. Again, we'll be doing a few other exercises every week. We'll be doing another version of three or four exercises to focus on the shoulder mobility. This week we're working on the bands. Next week we've got a couple other ones, and we'll film that and send that off to you guys as well too. Again, any questions, you know how to get a hold of me. KurtHoss at gmail.com, HostileConditioning.com, and uh, on Facebook at Hostile Conditioning. This is Kurt Haas from Hostile Conditioning saying, crush it.